Exercise 5. In this exercise, for the first time, we look at assemblies uh, in the bottom-up uh, bottom method for creation of assemblies. So basically what that means is bottom-up means that these are parts that are already created for us, and we're going to go ahead and bring them in. So in other words, kind of like library parts. So you're not actually building anything in this exercise, per se. There is something called top-down assembly modeling, which basically where you would construct the parts with inside the assembly, and that will be covered at a later date. But to begin, let's first start by going to File, New, and select Assembly, and hit OK. You'll see an assembly file looks a lot like a part file. You still have the uh, front, top, and right datum planes, and you have an origin, and you have a feature tree on the left. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start inserting our first parts. It's very simple. You just go right up here to, on the right hand side and you'll find add component to the assembly. Select it and it will bring up uh, Explorer. And from here what you need to do is find your Pro-E Wildfire folder, sample files, Pro-E E5. And in here you'll find all the parts and sub-assemblies that are required to assemble our assembly. The first thing you want to do is select the bracket and hit open. You'll see that the bracket drops in and it has kind of like a putty grayish brown color. Um, basically right now this is a temporary stasis. We just have to decide how we want to lock it in. Now up at the top here you'll see that there's different options for placement and defining how it's supposed to be locked in. For the very first part it's not a bad idea in this case to go ahead and click on where it says automatic here and fix this part. In other words, lock it down. Because what this is, what we're building is kind of like a, a it's gonna, we're going to enable something called dynamic assembly motion, and we want one of the parts to stay stationary. In this case, this bracket will. So we select fix and hit the green check mark up at the top right corner. The next thing, or the next part we want to add is we could go back to over here on the right to the add component, and we're going to look for the yoke mail. Open it up, and it should drop to the right of your other your bracket part. Now, since it's that putty color, that means that we could go ahead and select how we want to define its location. First of all, let's take a look at some of the other options in here. We do have automatic, um, which is fine in this case, and there's placement and move, and there's uh, a couple options here for uh, coincident, uh, parallel, and parallel at a distance. But let's first, uh, we want something that's concentric. We want to actually take the shaft of the yoke mail and drive it between the, the circle that's right here, the hole. So let's go ahead and select the faces. Go ahead and select this face right here. And then go ahead and select this face. And you'll see it will align itself. But we're not finished yet. In order for dynamic assembly motion to take place, that's where we're going to be able to move the parts, almost like simulating motion, we want to go over here to placement. And you'll see that it has selected our user-defined surfaces that we used between the bracket and the yoke mail. Now under constraint type, um, you'll see there's insert, and uh, we could go over here to new constraint if we want to add some additional ones. And as a matter of fact, we do want to add some. So once that new constraint is selected, we could go ahead and we now want this surface selected, and then this surface right here. And you'll see it will attach and snap to those faces. Now in this case, uh, sometimes people ask, well, don't you maybe, uh, perhaps you don't want those to be face-to-face -face or coincident. Um, that's true in some cases, but at this point, that's fine. Uh, we're going to leave it alone, but later on you'll see actually how to add a distance between those two. So a little tolerance, as you might say. And now we'll see this option under status. And this is kind of important if you're looking to imply dynamic assembly motion. You have to, under status, turn off allow assumptions. And it will leave it partially constrained. If that's not turned on, you could go back by right-clicking on the actual part in the assembly and going to uh, edit definition and then you'll get back to this area and you can turn off allow assumptions and hit the green check mark and now to show you what I was talking about up here you'll see this options drag package components go ahead and select that 
and there's actually some options that appear to the right here. I'll bring them onto the screen so you can see it. Basically, you could go ahead and click on any entity of the part you want to move, and you'll see you could just now move it. It drags around, and we've enabled dynamic assembly motion. Now, realize that it's rotating in, in its place. We've removed certain degrees of freedom it had, but we've left a couple there, so we're able to actually allow this to move. And when you're ready, just hit OK and close when you're done. Let's insert another part here. So go over here to Add Component. And this time we want something called the Spider. Hit Open. Again, it drops over here. Now, what we can do here is I'm going to turn off my planes. I don't really need them right now because we're just selecting faces here for mates. But let's go ahead and select this face here and then this hole over here. Now you can see they are in alignment, concentric. But now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add some additional mates. So we could select this face. And be careful, you don't want to attach it to that face between the legs of the yoke male, but this one over here. And you'll see it will snap into position. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now let's see how that moves. Go to the drag package components. Click on the part and you'll see it actually moves in place. And hit OK and close. Now let's introduce another part. Go back to Add Component. And this time let's bring in the yoke female. Open it up. And let's apply the same types of mates. We could select this face here to this open face on the spider. And then let's go ahead and select this face and mate that to this face. Okay. Now they're on top of each other, but that's okay. Hit the green check mark to apply. Now you could go ahead and go to the drag package, click on the actual model, and you could drag it down until you get it to where you want it. And bring it down like that. And then hit close. Now we're going. Uh, I applied a little too early here so I could drag it down, but that's okay. We needed to. Now we need to attach this face to this face down here. So what you do is you go back to the yoke female in the feature tree on the left, right click and edit definition. Once selected, the options come up again. And under placement, we could add a new constraint. So go ahead and select new constraint. Now beware in this case, for an offset. Coincident indicates that it's face-to-face -face contact. Do we necessarily know that this face is going to be able to contact this face? We don't know that, but up here we already have a coincident relationship. So let's go ahead and allow it just to go parallel or oriented. So select this face now and that face, and it should align itself. Hit the green check mark to apply. One more test. Select drag, and you can see we're, we've established some nice dynamic assembly motion there. Now for the pins. What you want to do for the pins is we'll go ahead and we'll go over here to the insert and select the U-joint pin 1, and hit open, and you'll see it down below here. Let's zoom up on that, and let's select the length of the shaft and one of the holes that are open here. You'll see it will kind of get in po position. Now, before we're done, let's go ahead and select this face and attach it to this face of the, uh, the spider. The reason for this is there is a tangent mate option, but I've been having some difficulty actually getting the tangent mate to find itself in the proper direction, not on the outside of the part, but on the inside of the part. So we'll use this as a substitute. Select that face. And then over here for the align option, select the align by a difference and we'll actually put in an explicit value of 0.35. Hit enter and hit the green check mark to apply. Let's add a couple more U-joint pins, smaller ones this time. So U-joint pin 2, drop one of those in, see it over here, let's do the same thing. Select that, select this face here to that face and define it by a distance of 0.35.
Now we need to get another one. So let's go back to add component, U joint pin two, open it up, and now select these faces here and here. And this might be a little bit more of a challenge, but what we can do is we can hit the apply button. And if we need to get that out, we could go to wireframe and then go to the move component or drag and find that component. I think that's it there. And let's sweep it around. Actually, let's go back to shaded mode. And it's in there somewhere, but um, let's try once again to go to wireframe. And there we could see it. There we go. And I just have to drag it through and click to drop it, hit OK and close. And now let's once again go back to shaded and we could now go to uh, edit definition. So right click on the U joint, the second U joint pin two, edit definition, select this face here to the face of the spider. Go over here to at a distance, 0.35 and hit apply. Now if we want to test this again go to the drag and you'll see everything moves in position. Looks good. Alright now let's introduce a subassembly. The way we do this again is just the same method and you'll find crank assembly. Hit open and Basically, it's a subassembly of three separate components. Uh, Pro Engineer treats it almost exactly just like a part file, so you don't really have to adjust or adapt the way you mo you attach these components. So again, let's um, let's go ahead and select the inside of this shaft to this shaft here, and then let's go ahead and apply it. Now let's go to the drag and drag it up. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, now we need to ensure that the flat on this shaft meets the flat on the inside of the hole. So let's go back to the crank assembly, right click, edit definition, and now we could select this face to that face. And it set us at an angle, but instead let's go with parallel at a distance. And hit up. Um, we don't want to apply just yet. We have one more. So let's go to placement now, new constraint, and now we'll select this bottom surface to this top surface. And in this case, instead of coincident, let's set it an offset. And we could go ahead and we'll put in point zero four, just a very slight offset and hit apply. And you can see that there's an offset in there now. Okay, now we could go ahead and test it. Go to the move component, actually a uh, drag, select it, select the handle, and drag it. And if it works properly, then you're in good shape. And that's exercise five.